Hello, my name's Terry, my call sign Golf 4, Papa Oscar Papa, G4 POP. And this uh, brief tutorial is a quick start guide to Log4 OM version 2, just to show the quick way to start it to operating with it. Uh, first of all, of course, you need to uh, download the uh, zip file and unzip it on your computer, then double click on the installer, <coughs> and eventually you will be presented with this initial screen and it must be completed otherwise the program will not function as it should do There's particularly these fields which are marked with a red is asterisk I'll start filling them in and uh, the country is England of course The IRAU version will fill in automatically. In my case is reason one, but do make sure that is correct. <coughs> the ITU CQ zones will complete and a little flag with the DXCC number alongside. Um, the grid square is important. Um, you must make sure you use a six digit grid, grid square. and put in my one. A four digit is not good enough. I like to fill in the completeness of everything. You may wonder why so many call signs. Um, you start from the top. <coughs> station call sign is the, the call sign under which the station is operating at any one time. So today it's going to be operating as G4POP. The operator, of course, could be somebody entirely different. It could be, for instance, uh, the writer of the program, IW3HMH, he could be visiting my home and operating my station. And the owner, as it's my station, that is my call. The right hand side here is for details which may be used at some point when you send a macro perhaps in Winkier or in one of the data programs. Good idea to fill those in when you get a chance. Your special interest groups and also down the bottom here, if you belong to any clubs or associations like FISTS, um, I'm filling the, the details there. Just click the glad button to add it. Once you've completed that part of the form, click the save and apply button. And you'll then be presented <coughs> with a second part of the form. Uh, Look for M cannot function unless it has a database to save the QSOs to. But you have two choices. You can either have a SQL-like database, which is fine for most people, or if you're in a contest situation or running a DX group, then you may need to go to a MySQL database. It's only really needed where you've got multiple operators all trying to access the database at the same time um, to save any uh, mis you know, mistakes in the data being read. SQL-like database is good for almost everybody, really. <coughs> anything up to about 120, 140 QSOs, um, so it's got plenty of space, and uh, you can actually have multiple users as long as they're not using it uh, simultaneously. Now we need to create a new database, so we click the new button and select a, a location. So for this purposes, let's say we'll use the uh, documents folder. We'll give it a name: demo. So there's our database name, <coughs> we'll put it in the documents folder. It could equally well be in the cloud on perhaps Dropbox or Google Drive, which is a very good idea because then you can access that database from any computer you have. Click Save. Small message comes up, says database created successfully. Click OK. And again, Save and Apply. We're now ready to go and you'll be presented with this screen. Let's make it a bit bigger so everyone can see it. <coughs> it is advisable to do just a little bit more setting up. So if you go to Settings, Program Configuration, it'll bring up the original page again, but just uh, go to Info Providers, because you want to probably do a lookup of call signs. So I am using QRZ, um, so I'll just fill in my username. and my password 
and check it's working just click the little button to the right you get a nice green tick that shows that's uh, check the connection it's all working <coughs> the special feature we have with uh, look for OM is that you can also have a fail safe source so if QRZ is down or doesn't have the information you can use an alternative the second one uh, as a backup if you like and I'll again fill in this one with my username and password click the little button another green check so both of those are operating fine so what will happen now is any lookup of a call sign will be done first of all with QRZ and if that fails the backup fallback situation will be ham QTH uh, so <coughs> the web external source is uh, the primary source which is this one here QRZ or you can stipulate another lookup source or uh, the visual and click save and apply now we're ready to do a, a lookup <coughs> so you can uh, for instance put in a call sign here and you'll find it looks up I've put in a call sign of <coughs> one of our founders for a look from him Chuck the guard unfortunately died a couple of years ago and uh, so I'll put in his details so this is uh, image as is shown on the QRZ bridge page it's drawn the line here from my location to where he lived and a large scale map here of uh, Phoenix Arizona which is where his uh, home was so it does the uh, look up quite nicely the other thing you'll probably want to use immediately is a cluster so connect telnet cluster and you'll have this screen <coughs> look from him is fairly unique in that you can use anything up to 10 clusters simultaneously and the information from those 10 clusters is aggregated so that all the spots are combined and uh, they're uh, aggregated into one display so I use GP7 MBC walk and bay just click on it in the list click add and it's appeared in the bottom list here it's got PRI alongside that's my primary um, spot uh, cluster I also use V7CC I'll use that one as well add that in if uh, you wish to make a, uh, a special one which is not on the list you can click new fill in the form to the right and uh, click save and it will add it to the list here for future use once having selected a cluster which ones you want to use I've only got the two at the moment we we'll click connect and uh, momentarily you see all the spots are coming up in the screen there this screen can be used to send a command to the cluster should you wish to do so you know, show DX100 or whatever or to send a spot to the cluster or send an announcement and you also have a spot simulation system where you can actually simulate sending a spot it doesn't go anywhere other than your computer but it will display on your cluster list so having done that we can close that window down because it's just a setup window and if you go to the cluster you'll see they're all in there <coughs> and all the countries are marked red at the moment because basically we haven't um, any QSOs at all in the logbook so what we'll do is we'll pick one of these countries um, fairly usual one let's pick Italy that's a good one and uh, we'll pretend to work this guy he's on FT8 by the look of it yes I've got FT8 because he's showing the FT8 um, signal reports we'll give him a signal report shall we just for the sake of doing so it's done the look up this is Franco over there in Italy and the right hand side here you can see a picture of him as are shown on the QRZ page and it shows it's a new one because it's a new country we've never worked here before remember it's a brand new database there's nothing in it um, click on the information window shows you where Franco lives and if you wanted to uh, claim awards you could pick an award here perhaps you could say it's an IOTA Ireland uh, there he is so you could manage all oh, manage all sort of information here 
once you're happy with uh, the information, click the Add button at the right hand side. Alternatively, press the Return or Enter key on your keyboard. I'll save for instance, well, that's because I haven't <coughs> saved any reference here, but uh, never mind. And now you'll see in the logbook there is a QSO with uh, Franco. And if we go back to the cluster, I now see that Italy shows we've worked Italy. And uh, we've worked him on 30 metres. We still need him on CW because we've worked him on USB. So that's a brief outline of starting up Look from from, from scratch. I recommend reading the instruction guide, the user guide, and our YouTube, YouTube Victoria, tutorials. Hope you've enjoyed this short video tutorial. Look out for more in the future. Thank you for watching.